hands up here, go ahead and do that now. We don't mind if you need to get close, that's fine too. Um, I would like to invite Steve Ackerman up front here to go ahead and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance before we get started. The flag is directly behind you, the one on top of the State House. Thank you all. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome fiscal advocates of all groups. This press conference and gathering today will serve two purposes. The first is to introduce the Republican Liberty Caucus of Idaho. The second is to announce our renewed effort to convince our governor and legislatures to stand firm to their promises to represent Idahoans and not interests from outside of this state. First up, what is the Republican Liberty Con uh, Caucus of Idaho? To do that, I would like to introduce our chairperson, Karen Carostillo. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I apologize if some of you can't see me. Um, but uh, some of you might be asking, what is the, the Republican Liberty Caucus? The short answer is that we are the conscience of the Republican Party. But to expand, the RLC was founded nationally over 20 years ago and has until recent years been the lone strong voice for the principles of limited government, free enterprise, and individual liberty within the Republican Party. We believe that less government means more liberty and we work with our member activists to oppose government excess and demand accountability to the people and the Constitution. We are, we are fighting to reclaim the Republican Party as the party of liberty it was founded to be. We support the constitutional restrictions on federal government powers, enumerated in Article 1, Section 8, as absolute limit on all government functions and programs. We oppose the adoption of broad and vague powers under the guise of general welfare or interstate commerce. We oppose all restrictions on the voluntary and honest exchange of value in a free market. We oppose all legislation that concedes congressional power to any regulatory agency, executive department, or international body. We support the Constitution as the supreme law of the land, the Republican form of government it requires, and the right of all citizens to fair and equitable representation. We believe these are also the proper positions of the Republican Party. The Supreme Court has indeed spoken. It has identified Obamacare for what it really is, the largest tax increase in U.S. history. It is much more and much worse than that. It is the biggest assault on freedom and personal economic liberty in U.S. history. The RLC of Idaho urges Governor Otter and the Idaho legislature to join 22 other states who have already said no, they will not set up a health care exchange in their state. We are not asking our governor and legislature to stand alone. 22 other states, some red, some blue, and some in between, have already courageously said no. Obamacare is bad for America and it is bad for Idaho. Implementing a health care exchange in Idaho is akin to wanting the feds not to shoot us, so give us the gun and we'll shoot ourselves. We urge all liberty-loving Idahoans to join us in urging the Idaho legislature to refuse to set up the health care exchange in Idaho. Yeah. Call it what you like, but Obamacare is a government takeover of our health care system, a takeover of one-sixth or more of our economy. Obamacare will not allow markets to function more efficiently. It will do just the opposite. It will prevent them from doing so. Obamacare is a violation of the Idaho Health Care Freedom Act. 
Our children are already shackled by over $50,000 worth of debt they did not ask for, they did not create, but they must bear the burden of paying for. Justice Roberts, in his ruling, stated the following. The independent power of the states also serves as a check on the power of the federal government. By denying any one, gov any one government complete jurisdiction over all concerns of public life, federalism protects the liberty and the individual from arbitrary power. In the typical cases, we look to the states to defend their prerogatives by adopting the simple expedient of not yielding to federal blandishments when they do not want to embrace them. The federal policy, embrace the federal policies as their own. The states are separate and independent sovereigns. Sometimes they have to act like it. We ask Governor Otter and the Idaho Legislature to follow the advice of Justice Roberts and 22 other states in acting like the separate independent sovereigns they are and say no, we will not set up a health care exchange in Idaho. Thank you. Next, I would like to introduce Eric Macrush. He is the Operations Director and Transparency Project Manager for AccountableIdaho.com, which you have, if you have not been there, you should definitely check out that site. Um, that's also at the Idaho Freedom Foundation. He has served as a policy analyst and legislative advisor on policy issues centered on local government, urban renewal, state and federal health care reform programs, and higher education. Eric's work over the past decade for limited government has been noteworthy and regularly challenges the status quo. He has served as a legislative advisor since 2006. Please welcome me and welcoming Eric Macra. Thank you, Jason, and, uh, and the RLC. We appreciate it. Uh, the Idaho Freedom Foundation is a nonprofit organization. Uh, we stand ready to support uh, any group that's willing to help with the, uh, the challenging to Obamacare. As many of you know, IFF has spent years working on this issue. Studying the health exchange statute and regulations, our executive director was on the governor's uh, health insurance exchange task force, and the task force was left with more questions than answers. And yet, here we are, with the governor agreeing to do a state insurance exchange. The Idaho Freedom Foundation stands ready to provide intellectual support and meaningful data to legislators and the public about what an insurance exchange is and what it is not. We have seen 22 other states continue to resist the insurance exchange because it is the right thing to do. The, the Idaho legislature and the governor will can join the majority of the states sending that message back to Washington, D.C. We are telling the state elected officials, don't wait, send the message now. Let me emphasize three quick points. First, the state exchange is not in any way independent of the federal regulations. Some legislators feel that they, are being, uh, that they will be asserting state authority through an exchange. Congress passed a 2,800-page bill and now 4,000 pages of additional regulations the mo and more to continue to come in every day. There is no way the state will be in any control of much of anything. Number two, the state exchange will not reduce the cost, uh, health care costs, improve patient care, lower insurance premiums at all. In fact, the opposite will occur. And the governor legislatures, legislators who side with this proposal will, on, will own these increased costs and reduce the quality of care. Number three, the exchange is not merely an online place to shop for insurance. It is a big government program that will administer new entitlement program and Obamacare subsidies and penalties, the latter being a violation of the Idaho Health Freedom Act passed just a couple of years ago. Yesterday we released the following statement regarding the governor's endorsement of the state-run exchange. Quote, I have, I have a great deal of respect for my friend Governor Butch Otter. However, I strongly disagree with his decision. More than 20 states have indicated that they will not implement a state exchange. States are opposed because they understand that Obamacare depends entirely on states to implement it. States are opposed because they know that a state exchange affords almost no flexibility and makes states co-owners in a looming disaster in medicine. 
higher insurance premiums, more expensive medical care, reduced accessibility, and worse patient outcomes. Governor Otto's decision makes the national effort of resistance much more difficult and more likely the law will remain in place at great cost to Idaho families, businesses, and our nation's economic vitality. The Idaho Freedom Foundation will do everything it can, along with other opponents of Obamacare, to ensure that Idaho never implements this destructive law. Following the, uh, the opinion of the, uh, the task force that the governor convened, uh, Wayne actually provided some additional comments in a letter to the governor, and it says, Dear Governor Otter, I want to uh, take just a few more thoughts for your consideration. Even if one agrees that Idaho will have some uh, modicum of greater flexibility under a state exchange, and we sincerely doubt that that is true, or that Idaho businesses will be better off under the, state, under the state exchange, also doubtful, it stays, it, it still uh, doesn't negate the reality of the Affordable Care Act that threatens every form of government and the freedom of all future generations of Americans. Any temporary relief that the proponents expect to gain having a state exchange would be substantially diminished by what we give up in submitting to this obvious government overreach. James Madison said, if men were angels, we would need no government. But we do need government, and our founders gave us a great one. But, as great as it is, our government is only as good as the mere mortals who occupy seats of power. Madison and other founding fathers knew that our government depends entirely on the goodness and foresight of people who believe in the Constitution. It is up to us to protect and sustain it. It is our duty to sh is it, our, it is our duty to stop, oppose, and frustrate tyrannical ideas and behavior. When all, the, when all three branches of government conspire to endorse an idea that is not valid by the Constitution, our founders understood it is our system of dual sovereignty would provide a powerful backstop to protect citizens and their rights. That, of course, can only happen if elected officials like the ones who occupy the building behind us, operate with the support of people like me and you who are willing to stand for liberty. Finally, we I encourage you to visit the Idaho Freedom Foundation website at idahofreedom.net or call our office. There, we can provide you with the tools you need to, to hold legislators accountable and challenge the thinking of public officials who think that a state-run exchange will, in any way, shape, or form, protect state sovereignty. Thank you, Eric. Lastly, we have Steve Ackerman. He has taught political science and economics at several colleges and universities around the country for the last 15 years. This includes Boise State, UC Riverside, Northwood University, and Palm Beach State College. He is an, also an industry analyst focused on competitive research. He helped found the competitive research firm Provisio, based out of Meridian. Provisio's clients include many Fortune 500 companies, so it's safe to say he knows what he's talking about when it comes to money. Mr. Aikman is also a veteran of the United States Air Force. Please Woo! welcome Steve. Yeah. I want to thank Jason Robinson uh, and of the Republican Liberty Caucus. People like Jason, Ryan Davidson, and others, they help remind the Republican Party on the importance of liberty and limited government. I also want to thank groups like Jim State Tea Party. They, along with groups like the Idaho Freedom Foundation, are trying to protect your liberty. So I just ask you to consider a donation and a membership to these great organizations. They're growing, but they need your help. Can anyone imagine what Ronald Reagan would say about this health exchange proposal? Would he say you feel freer today than you did before the health exchange? Would he say that your, your income is as protected as it was before the exchange? I don't think so. Would he say the states are as sovereign after an exchange as before? Exactly. I presented three reasons for opposing this exchange. The first 
It will impose new federal taxes upon the people and businesses of Idaho. The taxing authority of the IRS applies to exchanges that are set up by states. It's very clear. Section 1311, section, section 1401, section 1402, and section 36B of the IRS code. Oklahoma is challenging the federal government on this and related issues. Where is Idaho? Yeah. Yeah. Idaho will be spending an estimated $77 million to set up the exchange and another $10 million annually to operate it. What will it look like? No one can answer that. Will it be self-sustaining by 2015 as prescribed by the law? No one can answer that. Will 30 new full-time employees, state or nonprofit, be adequate to run it? No one can answer that. And finally, will the money be taken from other state services or come in the form of new taxes? No one can answer that. How will, how will more money how will more money, no more taxes, that's right, no more taxes. How will more money taken from the pockets of working poor and small businesses make our fellow Idahoans better off? This is money people can use towards their own health care. Groups like the Freedom, uh, Idaho Freedom Foundation.